podcast of this YouTube universe of this video online thing. Welcome back to I'm Down. An audio thing too. An audio, exactly. Not just video. <laughs> Welcome you back. Second second, second. Second. Yeah, cause I thought I said audio. That's right. Podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all know what I meant, man. Welcome back to I'm Down. George Gutty, your favorite bad guy. Christoph the Third, your favorite good guy. <laughs> All right, man. So. Yeah, I voted. Uh, we kind of let the polls open this time around for you guys. Um, I think like a day or two or a day and a half. Mm-hmm. And the majority of you guys voted for family. And that's what we're going to hit today. So I think that there's probably no better person that I know. Well, one of the people that I know that's probably better suited for this topic than you. So, yeah, blush a little bit, cry a little bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> what's uh, what's your thought on that? I mean, um, it's just in general, like when you hear family, period. When I hear the word family? La familia. La familia. Been inducted and instructed to show these niggas that already fuck with hey. the fuck is up. Hey. That's Jersey no, boy. No, but Jay-Z was right though. It's La Familia, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, you didn't come up with that, right? Yeah. Did it? Was it? Yeah, La Familia. I don't know, but yeah. I took it out into music today, bro. <laughs> you just decided to hear Scorpion. Yeah, today. He's like, yeah, that's it, bro. Oh, man. So family is interesting. I think family is is cool because it's people you you know you don't choose, but at the same time you know part of understanding is that there's some people you do choose, right? Right. Like family is is you know as valuable, as intrinsic, is it adds character to you. It's the way you are brought up, all these things, you know. But it's also ties, you know, like those like those ties that bind you, that keep you grounded. Hopefully, that that remind you of where you are, where you've been, and where you want to go. You know, many times we all say things like. Oh, I just want to be successful so I can take my parents out of the hood or whatever, something like that. You know, and it's that's all a reflection of our familiar ties. You know, and it brings us back to to our goals and it drives us. But it, most importantly, it brings us back to who we are. You know, a lot of our identity is gonna be found in the people around us. You know, and so that's why I always say family. You know, some of the family you you you're blessed with, some of the family you get to choose to be blessed with, right? You get to pick them, and so I, I think that's the way. I think family is you know it's everything. You know, it's, it's, I, I always tell you this, I don't have friends. Like, you know, I, I really don't have friends. I can't name friends. You, I either have family or acquaintances. Right. Because, you know, the moment, like, I, I feel like, you know, you've shaped my life, you know, some way, shape or another, uh, it really impacted my life, or you've been there for me, you know, or you've helped me out or whatever. To me, you become family. And, and I'm forever indebted to family. Right. Acquaintances is something different, you know? So, you know, um, for me, I, I think I, I could agree. Um, I think that, like, the like family itself like you know like the concept of being blood i'm more closer to people that are my blood than people who mm-hmm. are right i mean i have like cousins like everywhere and you know like we barely have communication stuff like that just because you know for whatever everybody you know everybody's direct family mm-hmm. as in the people in your house is very different mm-hmm. when you grow up so coming up i feel like it, it really is your friends those people in your life that become so close that you consider them a family that you arrive for them for real that end up pushing you mm-hmm. and I think the importance of that is that it's just that like you know you gotta find those people that you yoke well with to help you grow you know what I mean like like at, at the end of the day mm-hmm. these people in your life the people that are helping you grow the people that tell you the things that are hard to hear that nobody else is really telling mm-hmm. you those are the people that you need to hold on to the most you know what I mean those are the people that you need to grow with the most and really you know try to find a way to to really like connect in a way that is beyond just like oh we're friends who chill on the weekend yeah. and that's it you know like, I mean? like, like that on the surface kind of and I, I think it's interesting uh because you know you said the people that challenge you that, that tell you the things you don't want to hear but uh, oftentimes since we see people as friends the moment they tell me something i don't want to hear kind of like but if i see his family it's like i have a choice you know you're yeah. there you know and i've been thinking a lot about family lately because I've been watching Luke Cage season two, mm-hmm. right? So if you understand Luke Cage season two, you saw it. Yeah. it like what the, one of the biggest themes in the whole show is the whole idea of family. You know, like yeah. his interaction with his father, his interaction with Claire, uh, the whole idea of the Stokes and the Dillards or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but and so to me that that's interesting because that's that's a struggle we all face. You know, we all face. Uh, like people say, you know, you can't escape the sins of your family. Yeah. Right. What your family has done. You know that name that binds you to people. So your last name. You know, I think it's a beautiful thing that you can't escape it. Because it's not about escaping, you know, their sins, but you also you have the opportunity to redeem your, your family name, to redeem, you know, the, the actions of your, the people that, you know, are around you. Because 
uh, you know, a lot of times we use family as an excuse, you know, and and I don't, I don't, I understand it. I may not agree with it, but we'll say, you know, I don't want to be a father because I didn't have a present father. I, I want to be a mother because I didn't have a mother like that was present. You know, I didn't have somebody that showed me how to be a man, how to be a woman. And, and those are valid. Those are honest things. And I think we, we can understand that. But I think the beauty of family is that you can say, I, I can be what redeems it. I can be the generation that changes. I can be the person that brings growth to it. Because I, I love the idea of having friends that are family, you know, and there's people that are real so close that there's no distinction between friendship and family. But there's also an honesty realization that, you know, you do have a family. You do have a group of people you were brought up with, you were grown with, and maybe you not, may not agree with them, maybe you may not get along with them, but life is too short to be hung up on what didn't work out or what isn't right. right. I, I think our job, especially if we want to be grow up, you know, we want to become the men or women that we aspire to be, is to, to try to mend relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, some relationships are never gonna be lovey-dovey, but our job is to reach out and build bridges, not destroy and burn towns, you know? Yeah. Because we wanna live, we wanna build legacies, you know? Mm -hmm. I may, I may say I didn't have the father that I wanted. What well, my job is to build the family the one day to be the father I wish I had. Right. You know? And I think that's the beauty of families. It offers you a window into redemption, a window into a new future. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of that comes with, like, self-awareness. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, to, for you to first off realize that you know certain issues in your life are because um, like your mom or dad didn't do this or they treated you a certain mm -hmm. way it's to understand why you feel the way you feel right yeah. I think that's number one but then what do you say about like people who feel like they can't escape those certain because a lot of people that grow up they're like you know my dad worked his whole life and I never saw him right like never and you know you grow up with the oh when I have a family I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna be there for them so you work so hard to give them the life that you never had. And you replicated what? But you, it, it, without really realizing, you still replicated mm -hmm. what your father did, which is work all the time, and you, you never got to see him, so you never really spend that time. How, how do you feel like you can really break that? You know what I mean? I feel like that takes a, a lot of self-awareness, a lot of like... You just mentioned that. It's like the first step, and it's a continuous step, you know? I, I, like life is not ever about one, two, three, four, five. Many times life is about one, two, three... One, two, three, one, and you keep repeating, you know, yeah. until you eventually get to the, the goal. Uh, and I think the first step is self-awareness, is understanding uh, what it is that didn't work. Mm -hmm. Why did they do things? Many times, you know, uh, especially, I can say in the Hispanic culture, you know, speaking first, is parents have that machismo mentality because that's what they were brought up with. If a man cannot provide for a childish uh, home and food, he's not a man. Mm -hmm. But they never speak about a man providing for their children emotionally, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Encouraging yeah. and molding their image. No, no, no. And so then men will then go and replicate what they've seen. And, and you, can, you can understand why. Mm -hmm. Because my dad taught me that if I could provide, then I'm a man. Yeah. I don't cry. I don't weep. I don't do this. I will provide, right? Yeah. And so we create this desensitized, this honest man who don't know how to lead. The same way with women. If a woman can cook, if a woman can't clean, if a woman can't do this, she's not a woman. Which is not true, but that's what they saw, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, I, I, I think part of it is the self-awareness of understanding why are my parents or why are the people that I look up to or I have as role models, mm -hmm. why are they that way? Yeah. Okay, maybe that's what they knew. But, you know, I have an opportunity to change the, the, the narrative, to change the story. And it's always about choosing to change the story. Because there's going to be a point where, like, you know, do I still at work an extra two hours or do I go invest that at home? Mm, I like that. You know, you gotta choose, you know, like because we always say, like, when we talk about discussion about work all the time, mm -hmm. it's like, it's so easy for me to get overtime. I say that all the time, right? Yeah. I just say well, every day, do extra work. But why? I'd rather go home five o'clock and handle other stuff that I cannot lose sight of. Yeah. And it's a decision of saying, you know what, well, money is a great, but money cannot bring you back memories. Money yeah. cannot bring you back those moments. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when we have to be not just self aware, but self disciplined. Yeah, so, you know, I like you said that too. I think a lot of us forget about the most important luxury that we have and we talked about mm -hmm. this like a few episodes back about the luxury of time and it, it, it's so like it's important what you said invest your time because at the end of the day that's what you really have you mm -hmm. know like um when you start to think about about just you know the the time that you are with your family they, like even if you don't want to be there that might mean everything to them you know what I mean so uh, I mean for me it's something that like I don't really I guess like never really has hit me because like I, don't, I feel like I've always been, like, everywhere else instead of my house. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because my parents are usually just, like, chilling. So, 
those those little things kind of like at least make me feel like for the future like you know we've had this conversation like oh i feel like i have kids because emotionally i don't think i could be there for a child mm-hmm. you get me so that's why i ask like, oh how do you think you could uh, like really break that off even if you're aware how as men or women or just as human beings are able to captivate those abilities because you might understand and know like there's people that know they're addicted to something but they don't have maybe the strength mm-hmm. and the ability to like to really like you know okay you know do this and then there's other people that are just aware of a situation mm-hmm. they just don't have the like literally the talent the ability whatever to honestly just grasp that and be like okay like, this is how I'm gonna be yeah. you get me because I I you don't know how to do that you you never were taught by somebody mm-hmm. how to do that you get what I'm saying like so it's um I think it's like one of those tricky situations where you where it's something that you have to work hard at and it takes time mm-hmm. for you to honestly like. Not just in your mind, but really just put that to practice in your own house. For sure, yeah. Like, if your dad isn't that person, then you need to start creating room for for him to be able to be that person mm-hmm. for you. You get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. If, if, if you're aware of that situation and you have your dad in your life like that, then it's definitely, I think, and I was just thinking about this, um, like, a few weeks ago. Like, I was telling my little sister that, you know, I think that... You know, we've had opportunities that our parents never had. You get me? Okay. Opportunities to see, you know, things through other people's eyes. We're born in an era where we're, it's much more open. You know, in the United States, and like, you know, you said we're Hispanic. So, my parents weren't born here. They didn't grow up here. My parents came here until, like, they were, like, in their 20s already, you know. So, by then, you have kind of more of a foundation mm-hmm. on, on how you think. So, I think it's really up to us to, like, not blame them because they don't, they weren't really exposed to all the things mm-hmm. we're exposed to. Yeah. And I think that that word expose is something that that we don't really, like, think about. Like, experiencing something, being exposed to something expands your mind. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Beyond reading yeah. and getting the knowledge of yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like, you can read what getting drunk is. You know what I mean? You have the knowledge of it, but you never experience it. So your mind can never really expand and, and feel mm-hmm. everything. You know what I'm saying? So I think that that's important that, we, that we, we've been exposed to something different. So I think that it's our job... You know, as kids, to kind of guide our parents if we see that they're lacking in something, to kind of open those possibilities mm-hmm. for them. You know what I mean? Not just, oh, okay, well, they're like this, so whatever. This is, you know, you know, you just all you do is argue and fight. I think you need to find the best ways to communicate. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I mean? With fact, that's what it is. You know, like you have a family, whether they're a group of friends or now your family, whether they're your immediate blood related family. You know what I mean? Um, our job at the end of the day is to pass on what we know mm-hmm. you know what I mean to make them better to make life for the next generation better mm-hmm. and that's just the cycle really you know what I mean of leaving yeah, something yeah, behind life, you know what I mean? yeah and, and I think you you touched a lot upon it but that whole idea of you know how do you break a cycle when you don't know how to you know <coughs> the strength to I think it still goes back to family I think it, it's understanding that as a, as a group of individuals you know uh, whether by blood ties or just relationship ties you hold each other accountable you know you give each other room for grace, understanding that none of us are perfect and that we are lacking, yeah. but you also love each other so much that you hold each other accountable and you remind each other of what you aspire to be. Mm-hmm. Are the steps you're taking going to lead you to be the man, and the woman that you want to be? Yeah. You know, because if I'm honest, like, you know, one of few people I, 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 I like open up to honestly is you, right? I tell you, yo, how I'm feeling, you know, how I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really thinking, how I'm going through stuff, what I'm battling. You know, and so at the same time, I see it from you when you told me, yo, remember you told me this and you didn't want to mess up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I feel checked because I'm like, damn, man, that's true. I, yeah. You know, and, and many times we're not able to open up enough to somebody to let them be accountable for us. Gotcha. And that's part of family. Part of family is I want the best for you and I know you want the best for yourself too. Mm-hmm. But maybe you don't have the strength, you don't have the willpower, you don't have the wisdom. So I let somebody in and I'm vulnerable enough to somebody that they can help me and hold me in check. Yeah. And that's part of family because you protect the family, right? And that's the whole idea. You protect yeah. the family, but many times you gotta protect the family from themselves. Yeah. <laughs> because it's not the dangers outside; it's the dangers within us that are killing us. True, very true. So we gotta be able to to understand yeah. that we trust each other, we grow together, yeah. and we fight for each other. You know. Yeah, I like I like that. You know, that's very true. Like a big part of that is really just having each other's back. You get me? And realizing like, yo, look, you say you want to do this, but you're kind of like going in the opposite directions. So I think you kind of need to like. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I mean. Like, I, I feel like a lot of times, you know, we, we may have friends, right? Or or let's say people at work or acquaintances like that. Mm-hmm. And I, my thing is having a hard time telling somebody how I feel about them. Honestly. Like, 
if I feel like you're a certain type of way, I have to kind of let you know. I mean, it always depends on like mm-hmm. you know the kind of relationship. Setting, you have. Yeah. You know I mean, like if we have that kind of relationship where I can tell you, I will. If if we don't really talk like that and stuff, then I'm not gonna really. You mm-hmm. know what I mean, but what I mean by that is like if I see like yo, there's like some type of potential in you, or so or something that you could better in. I have to tell you. you know I mean, I might come off as a jerk because maybe I've said it nice before mm-hmm. and you don't get it. So I'll probably say it a little bit harsher now or whatever. But I think that that's just that's just everything. Like, you know, we, we need to be told things that we don't want to hear. You know what I mean? Like, like you might be doing something that, that like, to somebody else, they're looking at you doing. And it's like, yo, I think you could, like, you know, you should probably, like, leave your house. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you could, like, you know, ex- mm-hmm. expand your mind in, in the world. But... Most of us don't want to really leave that comfort zone. You get me? That, that the safe space. That safe space. So when somebody comes to check us, we kind of look at them sideways and, and almost make them our enemy. You get me? Like we're, we're mm-hmm. on the defense. And and that, that's that's something that, that we have to like really look into ourselves. Mm-hmm. You get me? Like I understand like the person coming to you has to be able to tell you in a way that doesn't allow you to get a defense. Because a lot of times if, if I come to you and I tell you something, but in a certain kind of tone, yeah. you're going to get defensive. It's not you're what not you said, it's how you said it. Exactly. Yeah. So you're gonna get defensive. You're not gonna hear mm-hmm. me out. For sure. If I come to you in a way that you know what I mean, mm-hmm. like like you like you said, right? It's, it's how you mm-hmm. say it. Then you know it's more open for a dialogue and a conversation. You know yeah. I mean? So I think it's important on both ends, but I think it's important nonetheless. You know what I mean? So like, if you feel like somebody is is out of place, out of line, doing something that they're that you feel, you know what I'm saying? Like yo, I don't think you should be doing this. We need to be you know brave enough to tell that person. Because I think a lot of us kind of tend to like fall back and not say anything, you know what I mean? But I think, uh, at least, you know, for me, it's like, I know I'm a jerk, and I, you'll see that I'm a jerk, yeah. but at the same time, I don't like hurting people's feelings. Yeah, right. So I don't like telling them, which, like, what I know I should be saying, mm-hmm. because I care about you and I to be telling you this, yeah. but I don't want to hurt their feelings, so that proves something that we don't have enough trust with one another. Yeah. Right, because... I gotta trust the relationship we build. Like I told you, like when we talk about I'm down, it's like when you tell me Chris you're wrong, whether it's in front of a camera or outside of a camera, mm-hmm. I gotta trust that you know me enough and you mm-hmm. care about my life enough that you're not saying it from a place of anger or hate or this. Yeah. You're saying it from a place of betterment for me. Right. Right? But many times I realize that when I'm I'm afraid to tell somebody they're doing wrong, mm-hmm. it's because I don't have enough trust built. That's so it's not really So then I started realizing that maybe they weren't as close to me as I thought they were. Mm-hmm. Because I was too worried about their feelings instead of their growth. Damn. You know, the people I'm, I'm, I care about, <laughs> they know who they are. Yeah. I'll tell you, dude, you're, you're being whiny right now. Mm-hmm. You're being extra right now. You're being dramatic right now. George, dude, you're tripping out, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Relax. That's you know, time. You know? Time, like, you know, like, yo, you're being a savage right now. Yeah. Chill. You know, because I, I have that trust where I know that I'm looking out for the person that I know you are. Mm-hmm. Not the decision you're about to make. And that's important. I think that that trust needs to be built because many times we think we're closer to people than we really are. And we're not. We just like to have good times with them, and right. that's a big difference. Right. Yeah. That's that's. And I, I like I like that you said that right there, because that's very true. There's a lot of people that like, they're they're fun to be around, but we don't have that. You know, and I'm just thinking about it now. It's it's funny, but like, I guess it also comes down to the kind of person you are. You know what I mean? And and the kind of um the family that you've been like you know, into because the truth is like the people around you. In general, like you know, like, like let's let's say we, we remove the word family, mm-hmm. friends, all of that. Let's, the people around you in general are the people that influence you the most. For sure, you know what I mean. Yeah. And those people, mm-hmm. you start to get pieces from them. Yeah. yeah. Little by little, yeah. You start to without really realizing, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, just little by little, you, you find yourself. Oh, I'm saying this now, or I'm listening to this now, or I'm thinking like this now, because that it's just an influence. In yeah. You, you know, as I say, like there's, there's just this big part of being positive with everybody. Yeah. I mean, the people mm-hmm. around you, so you can take that in but that's very true man like at the end like the people around you make sure that those people are like you know real enough for you to have those kind of like the hard conversation yeah. with you i mean i think that it's all fun and games and ha ha ha's but you know when 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 shit hits the fan we have to be able to have those tough conversations with them you know i mean not just like just nonchalant yeah, kind of like, yeah, vibe just, time, yeah. yeah so Be- because i think also part of it is um when you talk about self-awareness but many times self-awareness does not happen until there's openness and discussion. Yeah. Because somebody somehow has to be able to see through the, all the nonsense and pull out of you the truth. Yeah. Because many times we can't pull out of ourselves. We, we're too good at putting excuses for ourselves. Mm-hmm. So somebody has to keep challenging. No, no, but why do you think that? 
Because I do know about why and why and why. And until you have that breakdown, that leads to a breakthrough, where you're like, no, no, it's because this happened to me when I was little, or because my parents were like this, or because of this, 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 and this. And then you realize, whoa. That's why. That's why. Yes, I mean. But we need that driving from each other, you know? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, no, no, I see the potential. I see the growth. I see how good or great you can be. So I'm not going to let you settle for mediocre because I'm not going to be that friend that just tolerates you. I'm going to allow you to grow. Yeah, and I think that's so important. Um, I was thinking the other day, somebody said how the greatest, like, the greatest basketball player right now, like, you know, which, like, by popular, I guess, demand or voting or whatever is LeBron James, right? Mm -hmm. But the best, like, basketball player right now could be typing in a cubicle right now. You get me? Like, mm -hmm. and, and you don't realize it because within himself, he can't see the full potential or the full, but somebody else might. And that's just, it, in that example, it could be anything. You know, the greatest writer mm -hmm. right now could be shoveling, I don't know, dirt and construction thing right we now. We always say the story of Michael Jordan getting, uh, they didn't make him the JV team when he was in 10th grade. Right, right. Michael Jordan. Michael did not Jordan. make basketball team. <laughs> exactly. And now he's like the goal of all But imagine if he would have stopped. Exactly, you know, and, and I'm sure that he had people push him. I mean, he had somebody, you know, like helping him out. Because otherwise, most of the time, we'll probably give up on things. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, I think that's the part. I think that I'm telling you, like, look, I, I know people. Look, you might want to do something, and you say it all the time. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this, and you never do it. You know what I mean, that's when people that hear you say you want to do something need to come and say, "Hey, did you do this?" Because trust me, that's gonna make you very uncomfortable. Oh, of course, you're gonna be like. No, it's because, you know, this is going on. No, because, and you try to make excuses, but you don't really, like, stop to think, like, I haven't done it because I'm just lazy as mm -hmm. fuck, and, you yeah. know, I just don't, you know what I mean? Like, and that's, that's just true. true. Like, when, when, when people start to check in those things, you kind of see people, like, like, try to, like, kind of change yeah. the subject, and they don't really want to talk about it because some of us don't yeah, we'll, really we'll, 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 like, backlash, too. We'll like, you know, like, relax, man. Like, you're not my mom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's what I mean by, you know, we start getting defensive. So, I mean, and overall, man, I think family comes down to... Not just, you know, people that, you know, is, is your blood. I treated today that, um, and I'm down, um, just to kind of give, you know, people with more reference. Like, okay, that's what we're going to talk about. Because at the end of the day, it's true. Like, family are your friends. You know what I mean? Family is not just your cousin and your brother and your mom and your dad and your aunts. There are people that you find in life randomly. It could be when you're young at 10 years old in the playground. I don't know. Or it could be when you're 50 years old. You get know I me? Mean? We find people all around the world that just that you know cause an impact in our lives to change for the better, to grow for mm -hmm. the better. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're here for—to grow, to get better. You know, and then we do that through communication and conversation. Yeah. At the end of the day, so. and I, I think you covered it. Uh, one thing I would say, honestly, and this may not be comfortable to you, but I'm gonna say it, is um, I understand some family relationships. Now speaking about blood, are not okay. You know, things have been done to you, or things have happened in the family. But let me tell you something, you know, you might not want to aspire to have the perfect father, daughter, or mother, son, or whatever relationship, but you should try to mend relationships to the point of talking, because it's going to come a point where, God forbid, you know, lives end, mm -hmm. and you're going to wish you did, because you're going to live with the pain and the regret, and, and grudges is like, you know, people will say grudges or, or bitterness is like you drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. You know, it, it consumes you. It kills you. And, and I see it all the time when people in like their families because you know a brother or a sister or a cousin or an uncle or a mom or a dad. So I understand. I can relate. You know, but for your own growth, for your own self freedom, like your deliverance from it. You know, you gotta take the step. You gotta be the one that says I'm sorry or I love you or this. Because pride, you can take pride to the grave or you can take love to the grave. You choose which one you wanna take with you. Yeah. You know, and at the end, you always say, you know, think more about your funeral than you do your, your mega cup. You know, and the same has to do with families. Think about a day when they're no longer here. You know, think about a day when you're no longer here. You're going to wish they knew how much you, they meant to you or how much you mean to them. And, and so some relations will never be perfect, but you got to do the best to at least make it work because they're family at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And family is family. For sure. <laughs> no, for sure. Hands up. So um, I think, I think, um, we can end it there. I think that, you know, uh, we covered some of it. Um, for those of you, you know, who have, um, who are more family-oriented, our family oriented have kids of your own, you know, stuff like that. Um, if we miss anything that you'd like to add, 
you know, and if you're watching this on YouTube, comment down below. If you're watching this on the podcast, you go to you know our Instagram page. Yeah, we're on Spotify. Yes, yeah, so we're on Spotify. And uh, you can't comment on no podcast know, or nothing, but, but you know, again, you go to our Instagram page. DM and everything, whatever. Us and, you know, let us know if we miss something. You know, we uh, one thing that we do love is to go back to the messages, the comments, and kind of see, you know, like how you guys are feeling. Like, oh, you know, if you guys check us and say, oh, we don't like how, you know, this is, mm. you know, I, I like the little community that we're starting to yeah. build up. You know, we've been at this for like, like two, two months. Like, yeah, a little, like, a couple of days over two months. So we're liking the community that we're starting to build, people are interacting more and stuff. We appreciate you guys for watching. And you know, again, just like, comment, subscribe, and uh, let us know how you feel. More importantly than any of that that I just said about the like, comment, subscribe. So let us know how you feel, you know, like I said, in the comments and all that stuff. So um, we thank you guys for watching.